life with Treasures of Fort Pierce, What's Your Story? I'm on my way to go see one of my favorite people. His name is Saber Mochaccino. And I've always wanted to get his backstory of how he got into fashion, how he's gotten into his music, his, his multi-talented tasks. His mother's gonna be there today, so I'm excited to introduce her also into this picture. And I just wanna know, Saver, what's your story? What's Thank going you on, Superstar? Yeah, Thank come you on for in. letting us in. This is hey. Julian. <laughs> come on in. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the mini collections. I have maybe one purse, that's it. But I have, how many dresses do I have? <laughs> I have at least 40. <laughs> I, you know what, Saber, yep. at what age did you know that you're, you wanted to do this? Um, well, uh, most people know my story. So my mom was always festive. She had like, when we first moved to New York, um, it was just me and my mom and years passed and then um, my sisters came along mm -hmm. and it was just us three. Uh, my two sisters and myself. Um, I'm the oldest and the only boy. As I got older, realized I was actually happy. She still lived. She didn't, um, her life was not entirely about her children. We were her top priority, but she mattered, and that's why I, I, from that I learned, and I always would tell other moms and other parents that, yes, parenting is important, but you matter in the process yes. because of watching my mom. She made um, uh, socializing look so much fun and fabulous. And when I got, when I was younger, I always said, when I get older, I want what she's, I want to be, I want to party and, and be fabulous <laughs> like my mom. And I, and she always made it look. There was a certain level of responsibility. There was a certain level of um, class. There was a certain level of sophistication that went along with it. And I would watch her come in um, every Friday with new fabric. Um, and she would literally just spread it out on the floor and start cutting. Um, and she'd start pinning to her body. And she had a long, um, you know, uh, life-size mirror. Wow. And she'd be pinning to her body these different intricate outfits. And she'd be sewing. And wow. literally, in a couple of hours, she's like dressed, decked out, and she's flying out the door. And we're like, oh my God, how'd you do that? Like, <laughs> we're in every, you know, it's funny because most kids in our, at our time, were outside on a Friday. Like, you're, it's Friday, mm -hmm. it's weekend, you freeze tag, hide and go seek. Right. We were inside like every Friday wanting to see what she was going to come <laughs> up with. So we're always sitting there like on the edge, like we didn't want to get in her way. I'm like, wow, what is she going to create this time? So it was always... I was fascinated by this concept that you can create something mm -hmm. um, to wear, I and see. I would always what I've always known my mother to create her own clothing. So you would say you you are truly self-taught. You didn't yes. go to any school no. to learn this. No. You were no. self-taught, yes. and she was self-taught, yes. and she was your inspiration. Yes. And my mom was so when her. she was younger. Um, in from uh, her native country of Panama so she was working on the old school pedal machines and so when she got to the States <laughs> she got more acclimated to the more uh, advanced at that time like the mm -hmm. Kenmore machines which were produced by Sears Singer mm -hmm. machines and that's where she started to really progress in her skill set mm -hmm. when I was uh, I think 19 or 20 I was in the US Navy and I just was compelled to go and buy a machine <laughs> because I wanted to I was really like so you're just answering one of my questions. Yeah, okay. yeah, I, and I just, I literally, many times when the guys or the other shipmates would leave mm -hmm. and go on Liberty for breaks, I would actually be, you know, off in a little corner trying to learn this contraption called the sewing machine. I'd go out and buy like fab, like scrap mm -hmm. fabrics and teach myself. And a couple of pieces were like, my original, my first pieces were really like not the best, mm -hmm. but I didn't, um, I kept pushing and kept right. pushing. When it came time to re-enlist, I opted to pursue this concept of creating clothing. Um, and the Navy was not at all happy about it. Now, when you created the clothing, you also went into making handbags. Yeah, well, and, came, and was the clothing men's or women's when you first it started? It was women's at first. And over time, um, then men's came along. And at, um, at that time, I had a uh, lady that was working with me um, who was creating these like satchel kind of handbags and 
and as we continue to grow and continue to uh, expand, um, her aesthetic was in the same place and I was continuing to evolve and she just didn't seem to catch up. And at some point it, in my head I was like, well if you did all this other stuff, why can't you make bags? And I was just like, hmm, I wonder if I could. And so I made my first messenger bag. My roommate at the time had purchased it. He still has it to this day. Mm -hmm. And um, I just continued to create and push myself each time. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been the biggest thing. Watching my mom, she's never, she was never formally trained in a lot of the things that she does. Today my mom does interior design. My mom, um, she recovers uh, uh, old furniture that you mm -hmm. maybe a, a family heirloom and you want to keep it mm -hmm. and these are all things that she no one ever sat down and said hey can you do this I actually see her going to Home Depot <laughs> and the men are asking her do you need help and she's no I, 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 I got it <laughs>Light Freeman of Treasures of Fort Pierce and we are at Saber Mocha Chino's Sip and Shop. Now what is a sip and shop? Well you come in, you sip a beverage, water, wine, sangria, whatever he has. There's food here for you and you get to try on any designs or if there's nothing on the rack for you, he, you can have a private consultation. So we're going to walk around and see his studio because this is very exciting. This is very one-on-one -on -one, and in Fort Pierce that's very rare. see you. I want to see you in this. What do you think? I like, I like the pockets like on this. Pockets. You know what I love? And most women are usually not, comp they, they don't like the pouching here, but what I love about this is that if you were a woman who was conscious or had somewhat of a stomach, this is perfect to conceal that because, and what I love is pockets. Pockets give you the, the stance and you look like you're there, you're in an official capacity. You're there to do business. And I always love this crown because yeah. you, I like to stand out in the crowd. Yes. I guess when I'm somewhere with media, I want people to go, who is that? that? Right. <laughs> yes, who is that? Who is that girl? The cool thing about this print is that most people would look at this and say, oh, this is a great animal print, but it's not. It's actually a chrysanthemum. The flower. Oh, wow. Yes. I like that. I like that. Hopefully Give me the pocket stance that. again. Okay. Yes, that's important. You're, you're there in official capacity. I'm here. I got somewhere to put my yeah. phone. Right. My keys. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Hello everybody. Well today <clears throat> we're actually discussing uh, or actually looking through uh, part one of my summer and resort collection. Um, this uh, usually every year uh, my clients are always looking for something really cool, really fun, um, flirty, sophisticated and just all around uh, 
you know, um, fashionable. The thing about when I create for summertime and the clients that I dress, usually um, I never try to stick to a specific season, more so because I reside in Florida. Though I have clients in New York and LA, um, I try to stick with non-seasonal collections or non-seasonal pieces, more so because my clients may um, be multi-climated, they may be uh, multi uh, uh, bi-continental, intercontinental. It could be a, a myriad of uh, things that their lifestyle uh, may require. So you may have at one point there may be skiing uh, for two days and then the next, uh, the day after that they're at, on the beach. So their wardrobe kind of has to have that same morphability or the, the same way to at least transform or work for them with, within their lifestyle. What I like about when I create summer, it's very easy. It's not too many layers. Things like cover-ups like this, which are great for the beach. And you can also wear like really cool, um, like a really cool sport bra or just like a really uh, sexy bikini top underneath, maybe some really hot, uh, great hot pants underneath. The same thing for this, and I love colors. I, I love colors like turquoise, juxtaposed with colors like browns and es espressos. Then I love prints. And the reason why I like prints, and a lot of people think that I just like prints more so because it's just color, it's colorful, it just, it's, a, it's a pattern or a print, but that's not the reason. There, my method or the reasoning behind it is there was an artist that actually sat and created this. There was someone who conceived this idea, just like I conceived the design itself. And these are like unsung heroes to us designers. We never know who they are. They never get the credit. And so it's my way of actually giving them some, um, some shine or at least some credit to their work. I think prints are um, like art pieces. And there's some graphic designer or some print designer that's actually sitting down coming up with this. And I think this is a, a, just a great way of giving them and their work uh, some credit. Mommy Mochaccino. She's originally from Panama, um, Central America, and she's just my heart. So, guys, say hi to mom. Hi. <laughs> hi. When was your big break? That's a good question. Um, my biggest break, probably when I did my first official fashion show in New York. Um, it was done um, in on on Herald Square, Midtown, uh, Manhattan. Uh, my mom was my biggest champion again. She's never missed a show. Um, and this was it was a couple of doors down from the Empire State Building, and I was very nervous. This is my first time showing a collection um, on my own, self-financed, no no help from anybody, and I was doing deconstructed design at that time. Um, now when I look back it's like you could have cleaned that up a bit but at that time it was to the audience like wow and I didn't expect people would want to come and see who I was or what I was doing but it was a packed house it was really like high energy the backstage was I had the best of the mo the best of the best of the models at the time nice. and it was my mom sat back and she, for the first time she actually started to see that this was really something Mm -hmm. And ever since then, she's, you know, she's always been, she's been supportive nonetheless, but that was like the stamp, okay, he's serious about this. Okay. And um, that's when the press started contacting me. I got, I was, um, had several write-ups. At the time, my best friend was also a celebrity stylist, working with various celebrities at the time, and he kind of I think I've me met along. him. Ron Padmore, yes. <laughs> we'll give a plug for him. He's, he's a he's huge awesome. supporter of he's me, awesome. so we'll give he's him a plug. Best friend. And yes, he's been a big supporter of Treasures of Fort Pierce, so he's been integral in me working with Mary J. Blige and Kelly Price and a lot of R&B artists getting write-ups um, in, in various magazines and he still to this day pushes uh, constantly. Now I'm working on a music project and he's been all over me about it. Um, when is the release date? When are we doing it? Yada yada yada. And it's just been a great ride thus far but so far um, it, the interesting thing is that I, I lived in New York, lived in LA and when I moved to Florida it was one thing I was chasing for all those years. Um, in New York, I struggled amidst what everyone thought or saw to 
live fabulous. Um, when I moved to LA, I struggled um, amidst what everyone saw, you know, on the surface. They never saw the scotch tape and the bubble gum in the background. Um, I struggled to look fabulous. And when I moved, ironically, to a small town called Fort Pierce, I realized I am fabulous. And it was because of the adoration and the love you, the other clients that I, I, I dress all the time. And there's no rush. There's a real deep appreciation for the work that I do. Um, unlike New York, where everything is fast paced, everyone needs it right away, mm -hmm. there's a, a much different level of appreciation here, and I gotta tell you, I love it. It's local coastal. It this is, is local it's, coastal. It's, it's, it's slower it's living. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. But that was my question. How did you leave there to come here? I probably well, know the answer, but other people <laughs> may not. Well, so I tell us. To New I, moved, I lived in New York originally. Um, my mom insisted that I move to New York when I had just left the military, and I did. Um, I didn't think about it, I just did it. Um, and then after 10 years of living in New York, I always had this belief that if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere in the world. And um, again, my best friend Ron moves to New uh, LA and he goes, um, you should definitely come and check out you know, LA. And I'm like, no, that's not for me. LA's too pretentious, it's, it's make-believe. And he goes, oh, that's perfect because that's, <laughs> that's a part of the whole fashion, fashion. concept. Yes. I'm like, eh, I'm not ready. And so. I went out and checked it out, and I actually saw it through a different set of eyes. And he said, don't come with jaded eyes. Don't come like a New Yorker. Come someone, come expecting something different. Look at it differently. And I did, and I actually appreciated it. What I got from LA, um, creatively and both professionally as a designer, it, it refined my work. It gave me a better hand and a better understanding of how garments draped on your body, how color. I was used to blacks, grays, and muted tones living in New York. And when I got to LA, it was this whole explosion of color. And I'm like, oh my God, like this is awesome. Like you can actually do this here and get away with it. It's cool. And then I actually, my, 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 my perspective on my work and my career changed. Ironically, of all the places, LA, I, you would think that that would happen in the fashion center of the world, New York, but that's not where it happened. It happened in LA. It was much more expansive. The garment district was, was huge. Right. So many different factories. I was in and out of factories, learning and watching the different sewers and just learning different techniques of construction and, and everything. And then my business partner and best friend, Chris, um, Are we going to meet him today? I'm hoping. I, I'm, <laughs> he's like running around crazy today. Uh, okay, all right. Hopefully fires, we'll. but, but we will meet your mom. Yes, mom's okay. definitely here. And But he was the one who came here first to Florida, and he said, you should definitely think about coming here. And I'm like, ah, this sounds like a repeat of why I got to L.A. He goes, no, I think creatively you kind of need a space um, and a place to be in that's non um competitive and also um, where you're focused. LA had so many different distractions. It was, you know, Malibu and Bel Air and I was meeting different people but I wasn't really focused on the work. You weren't creative, you were networking at the time. Networking at the time. But that's exactly. important too. Which it was it was excellent because it did hone my skills on people and socializing. Right. Um, from a different perspective. New York, you come in and it's kind of like you have a chip on your shoulder. And not to say that about everything, but you, you're guarded. LA, you kind of relaxed your stance and you was a little bit more open to meeting different types of people. <gasps> Let's see Brandon awesome. in the jeans. Nice. Let's see, buddy. Do we have a shirt he can wear? I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can find a shirt, hold on. Okay. How do they feel? Are they comfy? Yeah. Do they feel like they're falling off at all? Do you, do you have a little bit of? Yeah. yeah? He's awesome. He's now, awesome. now the other thing is. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's see, turn around. Let's see the back. Oh, look at the back of this. Good tush. I like this jeans. I mean, these are like um, very different. You yeah. don't see these. Well, these are. You get these from New York. Right, and they're pre-washed. Okay. Um, usually, when you get denim, it usually comes raw. Let's see a jacket on him. Um, yeah, let's, uh, where you know, is... when you see denim now, it's always skinny jeans. Yes. I like how it's so It's different. relaxed, it's really right. Different. I love, I love Do you like those? Definitely. Those are one of a kind. You wear those to school and... Ah, let's try this. Let's try a jacket and see what he looks jacket. like. Yes. 
And okay. it's inspired because, I, again, military, prior mm -hmm. military. So I like things that make you look like power and officer-like. Yeah, that's wow, now turn around so the camera can see you too. Look at the back of this. The details and the stitching is, uh, I, I just can't believe you self taught yourself this. I mean, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> My name is Danielle. This is my first time being here at the sipping shop, but I am enjoying myself. Um, I've tried on about maybe five dresses, five items so far, and each one of them made me feel so empowered. I felt like I can take on the world with each dress that I've tried on, and I'm really, really enjoying this. Hi, my name is Cherise, and I'm here at Cyberay's Zipping Shop and it's a lovely, um, I picked out a lovely uh, cobalt and dress that I will be taking home shortly with a custom um, blazer that I'll be using for business. So I'm looking forward to wearing it. Thank you everybody for coming out and checking out uh, Saber Mochaccino's Sip and Shop. These are all my gals, just a few of them and many more coming. And uh, you guys stay tuned to another episode of What's Your Story? On Treasures of Fort Pierce. Bye.